Hi, Mary. Okay, we are live. Will Nitsa. Will Nitsa. Nailed it. Nailed it. it. <laughs> We're doing a special episode two of Grow Series. Uh, he comes from IQ Bar. If you've heard of it, good. If you haven't, come on now. Uh, give us just a frame just to get us going, though, of what IQ Bar is about. When did it start? Just so, so we have some substance there. Sure. Yeah, I started it in 2018 as a brain food, quote unquote, was the original concept. We've emerged as, as a brain and body nutrition platform, I would say, is the future state of the business. The Hero product line are plant protein bars, but we also uh, rolled out a hydration product and we'll roll out products in ancillary categories. But that idea is an, um, a brain and body nutrition umbrella company. If you were to think of uh, or talk on the word growth the way that people do in CPG, at least the ones that, that you, you respect, right? What do you think that they're talking about? If we talk about the growth growth series here, what, what are we talking about? I mean, I think everyone agrees revenue is pro like revenue comes to mind first, for sure. Um, of, of course, now bottom line has come into focus in 2022. But I mean, I think some people historically VCs have defined growth as like how fast is your team growing uh, in addition to revenue? Um, how fast is your client list growing? Right. You. You could grow a massive amount, but you've got Costco, right? And so it's all coming from that. So, but I think generally speaking, revenue is kind of like the, the North Star, more or less. What would you say is one of the most difficult things occurring today in the space that we're in? Um, we can, we, so that we can drill down on it just a little bit and talk about growth around it. Uh, because it, it, it's easy to talk about 10 years ago or whatever it may be, but I think let's just kind of drill down for now so that there's a lot more impact as far as value. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what your business model is. I think if your business model is D to C, uh, you would probably say iOS 14.5 and customer acquisition cost to lifetime value, yada, yada, yada. That whole thing is probably what you'd say. Uh, in addition, by the way, like, everyone's dealing with the supply chain stuff. So I think that's like the ultimate common denominator. In, and inclusive of that, I mean like stuff, you can't get stuff, stuff's more expensive and things are just more volatile and less reliable. That's like everyone's dealing with that. And then like on top of that, I think depends on your business model. D to C is the CAC issue. And then, I don't know, I'm omni-channel and you are too, so... Uh, it's just like a variety of things. I would say one the the biggest thing though is is the supply chain and and price increase stuff. Supply chain and cost increase stuff. People have heard of this, um, and people are part of it. That's for sure. Um, what is it though? What is that 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 impact specifically? Is it causing? And since we're talking on growth. Uh, is it causing the growth to be um, slowed a bit? Is there is there less focus on growth uh, as we're talking about it, and maybe more on on sus sustaining uh, and or making sure that your products, if specifically in omni-channel, are turning at the current partnerships rather than kind of where we've been or, the, or sort of the, the message along the last ten years is is continue to sort of put the foot down? Yeah, I think it's, uh, the good news about our business is it's fairly simple. Like you have fairly simple costs, you have overhead, your people you employ. I mean, we don't even have an office, right? So it's basically the people you employ, you have cost of goods and you have labor, AKA tolling. And then, you know, distributor, ticky tacky fees and retailer ticky tacky fees, trade spend more or less, which, in and of itself only has a few buckets. So all, all told, it's actually a quite simple equation. I think, um, again, it's sort of like, depends on your model. Like there are models where people lose money for every unit they sell. And if you're in that camp, well, growth just got even more painful because the more you grow, the more outflows you have. And then juxtaposed with that is the less venture dollars there are to artificially prop you up. And that that's just a problem, right? So um, I would argue you probably never should have had that model to begin with, but that's another issue. Um, so I think it, it really comes down to your unit economics and 
I think brands that had, I don't know, let's say you had like a 60% gross margin, you had a bunch of suppliers approach you and say, hey, now your tolling's going to be this, now your, your materials are going to be that, and now your 60% got, got crunched to 50%. That's, that's okay. Um, you, you, generally speaking, I think a good model is revenue outpacing SG&A. So still, you're still going to be okay if you can have revenue outpace SG&A with that, that compression. Now, if you move from like 30 to 20, that's a different story. Um, it's still, still doable, but just, just a different story. I also think there are ways to claw back margin. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff that people haven't done because they haven't had to do it, like literally had to, meaning I will go under if I don't do this. Not like, oh, this is a good business practice um, that they're now real like uncovering as ways to claw back some of that, basically mitigate that those those forces. Uh, you, you bring up a good point. I think people watching this, specifically if they're in our our, our boat, uh, they'll understand that sentiment. I mean, we just did. Um, and it, it was, um, we should have done it before, right? And, and you don't realize it. You, 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 you might realize it, but you're not actively pursuing or, or activating those things, right? Especially in GNA, um, like you just talked about a little bit. But um, there are things in there, if you were really objective and you were had the mindset Maybe, maybe it's not happening, but you have the mindset of we'll go out of business next month if we don't fix this. You you start making really wise decisions, right? Um, the wise decisions that you should have done prior to actually saying to yourself, I think we're going to go out of business. Uh, but but in hindsight, we all do this. It's okay. you know. We all do this, whereas we just let it happen. Uh, or no, we we can afford that one expense or that one person helping to um, to put out more content is worthwhile. We, we make an excuse as to why it will work um, until you're put up against the fence. Right. And, and only then you make the really, really hard decisions, which which like you're alluding to, you, you should be doing anyway. Um, I, think, I think a lot of the challenge is what do people view as table stakes or necessary? Right. So I think maybe I and IQ bar and more broadly view th different things as table stakes that other brands do. Right. We don't do events, period. End of story. We don't go to Expo West. We don't go to Expo East. We don't go to blah, 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 blah. We don't do it. Um, is that a smart decision or a dumb decision? I don't know. Time will tell. I know that we save a lot of money by not doing it. I know we save a lot of time and energy by not doing it. But other brands, that's like table stick. You have to go because whatever. So I think people have to reevaluate what are table stakes for their brand. I think that's a great comment. Um, and and we're uh, in similar boats too. I think we operate fairly simple in some, some disciplines like that. Um, people say, yeah, but don't you go? I, I might go and walk the show and I might actually get just as much out of that. Um, mainly because of the same reasons you do you you put your voice out there a little bit so at least people are so like hey i think i know that guy is that, is that will over there you know um yeah. look at that look at that good looking cat over there is that will yeah anyway uh see that um so uh, there there's ways to save costs right um and as you were saying but it might not be looked at the same from other brands and as i always say probably similar to what you would say is to each their own it's all good i don't know if i'm right i really don't um and li like you had just intimated which is time will tell um and even then right time will tell you still don't know uh it did that one you know, twenty thousand dollar clip to that one show where you got X, Y, and Z. It might have been just a huge payoff. It was just a, an unbelievable timing, chance, luck, goodwill, all that, right? So anybody watching, it, you, you do what works best for you. Uh, it's always a gut check in any business. It's always a gut check. You got to go with with what feels good to you, um, and and be confident in that. Here's another thing I would say. A lot of people think they have to be great at everything. And actually, that's the wrong model, in my opinion. You should be really, really, really good at like two, three things and actually be quite average at probably five things. Um, like you don't need an ERP. You don't need 
like a CFO, I would argue you don't need until you're at 20 million in sales. Like that there's all these things. I think a lot of brands are like, whoa, we got to be really buttoned up there. It's like, okay, but you just added X, Y, Z to your SGNA cost. And the amount you de-risk by taking that move is less than the negative that you incurred by taking on that SGNA. So just be more comfortable being mediocre in five areas. And that creates a more sustainable you know, business model. I like that a lot. Uh, and I agree. Um, the, the times that you can be pretty good at a bunch of, of things is when you're well, number one, well capitalized for whatever reason, right? And you hire, you hire those really great people to do those really great things in those areas that you're not really great at. Um, and a, if you're a well-rounded entrepreneur, well, that word that everybody really likes to use, right? So I'm just using it here for context. Um, you should be pretty good at recognizing what those 10 things are to operate a really good business. And in this case, again, we could be talking about any business. I mean, any business. But right now we'll talk about CPG, right? Just a, a good, strong sales and marketing brand and food and beverage. Um, you should kind of know what are the 10 areas that we should be pretty darn good at. Um, two of them might be something that you're really good at, like sales, like you might just be a sales dynamo um, or you're mm -hmm. operation savvy, like you could cut through things, you know, faster than anybody. That's amazing. Those are those are epic. But there's like eight other things that you've got to be really good at um, to get to really the number that you're talking about, because that's what I was, like 20 million, like where you're like, OK, we got something here um, and not just one big pound at at Costco, folks, I, I, I'm just saying that just transparently. Um, it's happened before and you should go do your homework on stuff like that. You go and do, you know, three or four regions somehow on one big pound. I, I'm, I'm using this term pound. I don't know why. It's like a pound, meaning like, <laughs> I, don't, I know it's just weird. Dude. Uh, you know, I, I, I call it a big clip, you know, a big clip yeah. of revenue. And it might not be there. It, it might not be there in, in three months. And so I, I when we talk 20 million, it's just sustained, um, not slow growth, but like consistent slow growth uh, to that number where you've got some, um, you know, some substance to the business. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, that all you are as an entrepreneur is a project manager. So yeah, I mean, you're looking at the, you're like a management consultant and your company is the project, is the engagement. And you have your 10 variables. And yeah, to your point, you it's your job to move the pieces around in an intelligent way and know which to invest in and not. And that's kind of it. I mean, that's an oversimplification of what's a pretty horrifically bad lifestyle. <laughs> but but that is it. That's epic. Uh, yes. And and but a lot of people would agree. And, it, and especially right now, I I. I've been talking over there. I think you have been a, a lot. There's other people who are kind of coming out of the woodworks and, 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 and describing what we do for a living. Um, and uh, it, we're in a, we're in a really unique time. I would, I, I'd like to be optimistic because I think we are all cut that way. I, I always say, you know, what's the definition of, of an entrepreneur entrepreneur is um, you know, you're, you're optimistic when you really shouldn't be. There's like optimism inside your bones on the morning of what's today, September 6th, when in reality, you should have no reason to, you should, there should be no reason, you should, not, you should be like, uh, like laying in bed right now. Um, I think that's the definition of it. Uh, and, and having the ability to get through and just continue to sort of peek your head out to say, I want to put some wins up on the board this week, and I'm going to figure out how to do that. Um, where do you guys go? I mean, again, we'll, we'll use IQ bar as, as a good reference, but knowing where you've been for the last four years, where do you go from here? Um, you can describe your team. Cause I always think that that's helpful too. Cause I know you're a smaller team like us, uh, as far as keeping things in check and, and just, if somebody were to watch this, maybe they're, they're a group that's doing a half a million or a million dollars revenue. And they're just like trying to get through all this right now. Like where are the disciplines coming from? I think a small team in CPG is like the only smart way to do it. I don't know how else to put it. Um, every person you add is risk of going under. 
and you should treat that person as i mean treat them like a person but just at a high level think of them as such i think people get too emotional and emotion is good and all that but at the end of the day every person is a cost and a benefit like you need to think hyper rationally i think to that person i would say heck if you you should be a one to two person business if you're doing half a million bucks maybe three um and if you're not i would ask yourself why you're not maybe you're not because well i need xyz function filled well could you fulfill could you fill that with a third party you need to hire a w-2 for that role no, but I want to. Why do you want to? Well, because I think they'll care more. Do you know that? Have you A, B tested that? No. Okay, well, go do that. Um, so I just think that's like the first and foremost thing. Keep SGNA low. I think it's like the thing that most people get wrong and it's really hard to claw back. It's really hard to like hire a bunch of people and then have to let a bunch of people go. Like that's kind of the beginning of the end. Like that's when the spiral begins because you haven't had to make it work with that many people. So it, you can always add people. It's, it's way harder to subtract people. So really stretch because we all have had been in the situation where there's someone and you're like, what is that person really doing? Like these people are working crazy hours and putting in the work. And is that person really doing that? If you ever have that thought, like that should, thought should ideally never enter your head. Um, again, doesn't make it fun. In fact, it makes it quite unfun in many ways. Uh, but it means you have a sustainable business model. And then, the, of course, the like sub point of that is find the right people. Like if you're only going to have, we have six people. So we try to keep like a $2 million per head revenue to employee, 2 million plus per head ratio. That's our goal. So if we're not hitting that, why are we not hitting that? Well, maybe we went into like XYZ channel and that meant we needed more people. Well, why did you go on the channel? Did you need to go in the channel? Could you have beefed up this channel and kept that ratio? Right. So figure out what your ratio is, revenue per head or profit per head or however you want to do it. And to me, that's like the North Star of a business model. It's a good one. And, and um, if anybody's listening to that and they're wondering what he's sort of referencing, uh, many people use the rule of thumb of $1 million per one person. So if you're doing $5 million, you should have five people on a team. And it doesn't need to be exact. Like, it's your business. You you understand what, what needs to happen there. But it actually is a really, to, at least to me, it's a really good rule of thumb. Again, you're doing five million. There should be like five people, and I can almost call them out. You know, you're. I mean, you you should too, right? Like, kind of founder, sales, marketing, finance. He said you don't need a controller. You need somebody though who knows numbers and who's really keeping the books. Yeah, yeah. When you're doing five million, there's a lot of AP and there's a lot of AR. So just that management, right? Um, call them what you are, and then operations, right? Like there, I just named the five, and and in reality, Definitely. it's like kind of a dope team. Um, yeah, and, and especially if you have five really dope people. Um, so, you know, I, I would go a step further than you probably would would um, agree. You could do a lot with that. You can do a lot with those five people. I think you could do 20 million with those five. It, it gets a yeah. little hairy in some instances and you do have to outsource. And like at some point, as far as sales and marketing, like you might need a little bit of a team out there or some somebody that's helping as far as, because there's all these different things that are occurring at each of the retail partnerships as far as uh, promotional calendars and the like so there's a lot more there's a lot more things happening um i was going to use the word tedious but i don't like that word but i'm sorry i just use it i mean a lot of it is tedious i would say 60 percent of what i do is tedious and that's a pretty good ratio actually um because it means i'm spending a lot of stuff on like strategic work that just is cpg though cpg yeah. is tedious by its very nature, there's a lot of new, new item forms and responding to this and where are we at on that that chain of thought. It's it just is tedious. Um, welcome to CPG. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I, I like this because so we, we at least just we talked about sort of lay of the land here. We referenced uh, IQ bar again. Plug, plug, plug. Um, and and sort of the what to do now. Um, and again, for what we consider smaller brands, I. I think smaller is anything under 20. I mean, it's just small. People people are like, well, what does it mean small? Like, nobody knows who you are. How about that for small? 
People, people often think they don't, they don't realize like you, you're, you're so small. Nobody knows. Go ask, go ask the 10 parents on your kid's soccer team. If they yeah. know, they'll, no, they, none of them will ever heard of you. Um, well, it, it the Costco roadshow, like the Costco roadshow is a perfect like example of that. Give it, I, give I think it to I, us. I'll plug that, plug that, plug that. I want to give, give it to us. <laughs> no, I do. I actually would. Well, so we don't, here's another thing we don't do. We work with almost no brokers. Almost no brokers. Us too. Um, and we had the good fortune of uh, Costco reached out to us for a certain region. And they're like, hey, we think this could be a good fit. Go do a road show. And we're like, cool. We've never done a road show. Had no idea what it entailed. Educated ourselves on that. Flew out to LA. Did a road show. Basically what a road show is, you, it's insane. Like, uh, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Basically, you get there the night before, you set up your booths, you set up your pallets, you have a relatively small area, not much more than the sample area. So it's like supposed to be sampling on steroids, but it's it's the actual like square footage isn't all that different. So you have to make it work with that. And you show up at 930 or you show up at nine the following day, set up for a half an hour, and then you start selling at 930 from 930 to 8.30 p.m., 11 straight hours of on your feet, on concrete, like actively selling. Not like I'm behind a booth, like here, would you like a sample? You're like in the aisle, like interrupting people. You're like air traffic controlling people. <laughs> like it's insane uh, for 11 hours. And then like in your mind, in the back of your mind, you're like, I got this quota. Like, what are we at? What are we at? And like, and you're checking the numbers. You go, you go, you get... I forget what the report was called, but it's like a sales report. And they pulled the report and you're like, all right, here's what you're at. And we're like, damn, like, gotta like speed it up. And, but anyway, point, my point of that story was, you know, you talk to 10,000 people and they're every single person's like, oh, IQ bar, never, never heard of that. And then you get one who's like, yeah, I buy you on Amazon. We're like, woo, yes. like high fiving, like, but I mean, that's one out of 10,000. So it, it, it is a great example. And it's, and it's, and it's, to the point of it right and you guys found it's fun and it is fun when somebody's like oh yeah i know you guys i, I just bought a box number you're like yeah but it we're so small i know big brand we'll finish with this and you know this too i know big brands i mean even so, someone in our space right salty snack category like they're sizable very sizable and there's still to this day if i've asked somebody randomly like hey you know well we sell this product and I'm like have you ever heard of x and they're like no i've never heard of it and then you would say, well, yeah, but was it market fit? Like, is it somebody who would even buy it? Yeah, kind of it would be. It's like they're kind of like, you, you don't realize like you could go ask a really big business. And when you talk about a household penetration, the number is still extremely small, extremely small. It's why, again, go out there and just define yourself and go get 10,000 customers. I mean, like that is an amazing starting point. That's gigantic. You know, somebody was like, I'm going to get 100,000 customers. If you had 100,000 customers, <laughs> that's that's big. It's it's a, it's a really big deal. Um, and so, you know. Uh, Just, I also, it also reminds me, like, there are endless humans. Like, there are, for all intents and purposes, there are endless humans. So it's like, that's why I never really buy into the whole total addressable market thing and I guess there's the blue blue ocean strategy is a like book on it, whatever. But beside that, that besides the point, I just don't really buy into that. It's like more, there's just infinite people, every person you can. And the beauty of food is everyone eats, everyone does the same thing three times a day. And if, as long as you're not something like bizarre, right, they'll probably try it. They'll tell you what they think of it. Like, again, that was the guy. Costco thing was like a sociological experiment. It's like you understand, you're like, oh, that's how people buy for their kid. Like mm -hmm. the same thing kept happening that they'd be like, kid, try this. Like, do you like it? And they're like, yeah, I like it. And then like, well, would you, do you actually like it? Will you eat it? Cause it's like, that's the parent psychology. <laughs> like the kid says they like it, then you get it, then they don't eat it. So like they already know. So it's like you understand, I understand now how like parents shop for their kids and how like older people shop and younger people. It's a whole, um, I don't know. It was just a fascinating experience for me. I'm glad you got that. When I saw you in there, that that got me excited for some reason. I And it just made sense. And like you were doing it at the fanny pack, it, was, it made me excited. Um, 
Will Nitza, the, his info's there for IQ Bar. Check him out if you haven't already. Good stuff. And, and get better, dude. Get better. Right, thanks for having me. Peace.